If you're just starting out as an aspiring coach from scratch, or you're restarting yourself from scratch, and you want to have a plan to launch or relaunch properly so that you have the business of your dreams, well, this video is for you. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stacey Storino. Welcome back to my channel, the number one place for entrepreneurs who want their content marketing to convert content consumers into paying customers. Look, I've had eight years of experience coaching what's become thousands of people in total, and a lot of what I've seen through the years has led me to create this video about 10 things to do before starting as a professional coach. But before we get started, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get the help that entrepreneurs like you need to succeed with content marketing that drives traffic to your business so that you can do more business. I recently did a video entitled how to start a career as a professional coach, which is part of my professional coach business startup series playlist on YouTube. And you'll want to make sure that you see that video and that playlist and all of the videos on that playlist. The previous video in this series gives you guidance in terms of the ideal blueprint and the framework to set up to build the house of your business success. So you've got to watch that video after this one. Now let's get into the 10 things to do before starting as a professional coach. So one, have a business plan. This business plan of yours should involve a variety of things from the type of video based content that you want to publish to YouTube and the types of other content, regardless of the media type that you're going to publish otherwise on your website and social media to all of the different income streams that you want to set up so that, you know, you're actually making money from your business and not just spewing out all of this organic content that's free. You of course want, will want to launch things like your course and or your coaching packages, one-on-one, -on -one, one -on group, what have you. But after that, the possibilities are endless. Are you going to set up an account on Patreon? Are you going to get AdSense revenue on YouTube? Are you going to be earning affiliate income? Are you going to be selling merch or merchandise? You also must have a business plan that's clear about who your ideal customer is, because otherwise you're going to have a tough time optimizing your content to be found in search without being buried in minutes and or you're going to have a tough time getting the business conversions you need to succeed, like email opt-ins and actual sales because ain't nobody got time for broad general coaches and courses anymore. They want specific things that are custom tailored to who they are to solve their particular and possibly unique challenges. I have a video called how to start as a professional coach that will help you on this front. And it contains a formula that you need to run to create your X factor that will attract your ideal customer once you're very specific and narrowed down in terms of the niche you'll serve. And that formula will help you to distinguish yourself from any seemingly similar coach or entrepreneur that's out there compared to you. So having a plan in place for your business gives you a good head start so that you can get traction with the humans consuming your content and the algorithms that will serve up and suggest out your content to them. But this is just one of the 10 things to do before starting as a professional coach. Two, pick one content topic. So I don't ever like a coach to pick one broad thing to serve as the focus of their YouTube channel and or the free content they'll create for their relationship marketing on social media, for example, because look, if you try to sell to everyone, you end up selling to no one. And even after you've niched down in terms of your ideal customer, that's nice, but you can't be everything to a single niche either. Pick what your big focus is that's narrowed down and specific. Pick what your big focus is going to be. What are you going to drill down on and know better than any of your competitors? You can't be the master or mistress of everything. You'll burn out and honestly, People will happily pay more for a custom crafted coach and or course and or 
other type of offering or solution that's specifically created for someone just like them with the particular problem or needs that they have. Don't create a bunch of different focuses for yourself in terms of either your free or your paid content or offerings. You'll spread yourself too thin. You can't command premium pricing and you'll likely fail to get the kind of traction you'd want to have for your business. But now on to the next item in terms of the 10 things to do before starting as a professional coach. Three, choose your goals. Yes, there's a whole bunch of goals you should have set before you successfully launch or relaunch yourself as a coach and overall entrepreneur. Goals that concern things like audience growth, content publication, like how many live streams and videos a week, where, what frequency, and even goals pertaining to monetization streams, like goals as to what you'll make when you first launch a course or coaching package. Goals for when you make the YouTube Partner Program. Goals like when you launch your Patreon account. Goals for when you set up your merch shop. What I don't want to see you do is just endlessly upload content or grind your face off on social media, aimlessly waiting for your business to take off and for people to buy your offerings. Fail to plan, plan to fail, as they always say. Set goals, set deadlines, and therefore be more intentional about your business on the regular. How does that not help you? I mean, seriously. But what's the next item when it comes to the 10 things to do before starting as a professional coach? Four, brand design. The branding of your business overall, let alone, you know, your website, your sales funnels, your YouTube channel, your social media accounts, and more, really ideally should be shored up before you launch. Lucky you, I have an entire professional coach branding basic series playlist for you that will coach you through the process of making the proper arrangement and decisions with respect to everything that will serve up the proper branded experience that will consciously and or subconsciously compel your ideal customer towards you all the more. Branding works. It's impactful. You can't skip it. You're an entrepreneur with a business. You want to start treating it like one instead of some haphazard hobby. Then there's five, channel trailer. For your YouTube channel specifically, you never have a second chance to make a first impression. So a channel trailer that's no more than one to two minutes long that you set up on your Channel for newcomers is a must, and it needs to say who you are, who your channel is for, and why that newcomer really should subscribe to your channel. What do they get out of subscribing to you that they can't get subscribing to someone else who's really otherwise the millionth person providing coaching and or courses? Lay out concretely who you serve, how you serve them, and what result they're going to get out of both your free and paid content. You can win so many subs and future customers this way, but that's not all when it comes to the 10 things to do before starting as a professional coach. Six, plan your playlists. YouTube especially loves it when you organize videos into playlists, especially when you properly optimize them for search on that platform. So other than that channel trailer I just discussed, plan out your content so that it's always published as part of a playlist. And I wouldn't really put it more than 10 videos or so in a playlist so your ideal customer can binge your content, but otherwise not be fatigued by like 100 videos in a playlist. Does that make sense? But playlists on YouTube help you to leverage the power of happy users and an algorithm that has even more data points to surface in connection with your YouTube channel and content. So moving on, seven, channel promotion. Another part of the 10 things to do before starting as a professional coach involves having a marketing plan or promotion plan for your channel and your website as a whole once that's launched. And ideally, you've got both launched before you start driving traffic. Now, specifically, the YouTube algorithm itself will reward channels whose videos get engagement and retain viewers on the platform. Good watch time, good retention, but if you're new or tiny, that's gonna be hard to come by in the beginning on YouTube itself. So for every video you publish, you really should email the people on your email list and use social media to drive traffic from those platforms 
including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, to your newest YouTube video within 24 hours of it being published. That will help you grow nicely on YouTube. Next, eight, network. My list of 10 things to do before starting as a professional coach definitely includes networking on your part. Collaborations with similarly sized YouTube creators, commenting back on comments that are left on your videos, posts, commenting on the videos or posts of creators who have the audience that you like, nothing self-promoting or spammy, you're just making nice with the ideal customers that should get to know you as a person. And on their own, they'll look you up on, say, YouTube, see you have a channel stocked with content, just like the creator whose comments you were commenting on when you met them. And voila, you might just get another subscriber. Make connections, make friends. You don't need to ask them to see your content. If you make a good impression on them, they'll seek you out on their own. Then you don't come across as sleazy and everyone wins. Can you have too many friends anyway? I highly doubt it. Network, collaborate, comment, make friends, have fun. Next, nine, education. You need to stop just blindly publishing random acts of content and grinding your face off post after post, video after video, stream after stream, and otherwise take the time to educate yourself as to how platforms work, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and so on. Know how to properly optimize content to be found in search by either hashtags, keywords, or both, depending upon the platform, so that as you create content promoting your latest video or other piece of content, right, so that it can actually rank well on any given platform and even be found in search by ideal customers, just like the ones you're trying to attract to support you as a coach and creator. If you don't learn how these platforms and their algorithms that rule them work, you're just slinging content-related spaghetti against the wall and hoping something sticks. And look, that just doesn't work. Finally, 10, channel stocking. When you first launch or relaunch your YouTube channel itself, may I suggest that you have several videos already created, edited, and optimized, all ready to go probably all published into one playlist at least to start out, other than your channel trailer. Then, you know, publish them. Because like I said before, you never get a second chance to make a first impression with an ideal customer. If someone comes to your YouTube channel and there's nothing on there or one or two videos and otherwise there's digital tumbleweeds rolling through, why would they want to subscribe to you? So stock your channel with some videos to give people a good feel for what you're all about and that you're not some flake with a video or two and then you're gone, either period or for months at a time. If you're relaunching and it's been a minute since you published, that's okay. Get a playlist worth of fresh videos published to your channel and you'll look like you're back for good this time. That's fine. My advice is similar for your website. Have all the usual pages well fleshed out on it, like your about page, your contact page, and so forth. But yes, I would have a few blog posts created and published to your website too, so that it doesn't seem so skeletal to a newcomer. And also, it will give off the appearance of you not being some fly-by-night hobbyist with barely a thing to say on whatever topic or subject you're supposed to be an expert on. Put a little meat on the bones of that website, okay? And that's the 10 things to do before starting as a professional coach, in this coach's opinion anyway. So listen, I want to hear from you. Which part of the 10 things to do before starting as an, you know, an entrepreneur frustrates you or intimidates you the most and why? Comment below. I do read your comments. In the meantime, if you want more help in terms of distinguishing yourself from the crowd and increasing your trustworthiness and the eyes of your niche, I actually have a freebie for you to pick up called 10 Reasons Why You're Viewed as a Fake Guru <laughs> and How to Gain Credibility and Customers Instead. And you can pick it up at don'tbeafakeguru.com. The link for you to score that freebie guide is in the show notes or the description down below. There you have it. You now have my answer when it comes to the subject of 10 things to do before starting as a professional coach. 
Need more help? Be sure to check out these two awesome videos too because they'll teach you great content marketing strategies that can also help to blow up your business. Enjoy.